All right. Good morning, guys. Um, we're going to do a shorter live review. Uh, review. My brain is not um, plugged in this morning, so please bear with me. Uh, it's been kind of a rough morning for me, but we're getting through it. And I still wanted to check in with you guys today because um, just this morning, for those of you that had a virtual plus ticket or an in-person ticket, I emailed out the submission link, the actual private submission link that only those of you that have a virtual plus or in-person ticket can um, get access to submit your music to the library CEOs that you see on your screen. I'll make them a little bit bigger. You guys can see these guys. So um, I know I'm going to get tons of questions. That's why in the email when I sent it out to all of you guys, um, I tried to answer preemptively uh, as many potential questions as I think might have come at it. Um, but this live stream is definitely just about uh, putting myself out there. So if you guys have questions about submitting music to music library CEOs, uh, if you already have a ticket and you're con concerned about that or confused about it in some way or you have a question, just go ahead and, you know, put it in the chat right here. I got the chat open, so I'll be happy to answer that. And if you don't have a ticket yet, um, we, in the last couple of days, as I've been doing a lot of these live streams, um, happy Memorial Day, by the way. Sorry. Uh, again, told you my brain's not quite plugged in yet today. Um, we've actually sold almost out of all of our virtual plus tickets. We're now down to actually just eight um, virtual plus tickets. So we had 20 about a week ago, and now we're down to eight. So after today, probably a few more of those are going to go. And I think I'm going to be cutting off all ticket sales uh, this coming Thursday. So basically in three days from today. So we are going to be limiting how many people can uh, buy a virtual plus ticket. And that's because I need to limit how many people are going to be sending music to all these amazing, awesome CEOs that are coming to sync up because I do not I don't want them to feel overwhelmed like they're going to have hundreds and hundreds of submissions. Um, I want them to feel like this is a sort of, you know, a manageable event for them to go to. And I really want them to feel that, you know, the, the purpose of sync up is essentially when you're in the room or virtually attending, you can essentially ask them questions about, hey, do you like this kind of music? Would your library be interested in this type of music? We were actually just, just doing one of our review sessions for some of the premium members. And I told them directly, I was like, I want you guys to feel, especially those of you that are in the room, that you can get up in front of the microphone and say, hey, I make cinematic blues rock. Do you guys have any need for that at your library right now? Do you have any clients that need that? Like those are the type of direct questions I want you guys to feel empowered to be able to ask them. So the whole point of Sync Up is to kind of tear down that that curtain that kind of sometimes gets in between us the music creators and music library owners so i want us to at least in this one small weekend you know in a couple of days i want you guys to feel like you can really get access to these people directly uh, ld what's up man can you still buy a virtual ticket yes virtual tickets are going to be available until thursday the virtual plus tickets also available potentially till thursday but they might sell out well before thursday so there's only eight of those so the virtual plus are the ones that you get to stream the entire event you can watch it afterwards all virtual tickets you get to either watch it live with us i'll send you guys the link this coming Saturday morning at around 9 a.m. Pacific time. You can watch it live with us, participate in the chat. Um, I'll try to be interactive with you guys as much as I possibly can. And or you can watch the entire event afterwards. I know some of you guys have gigs, you're going to be busy or you've got other obligations. You can absolutely just tune in on Monday or Tuesday or rewatch it. Just skip through parts that you're not interested in. Go, go to the parts that you really want to. The big CEO panel, I think a lot of you guys are going to be really interested in that. That might be the one you want to really make sure that you join us live. It will be 3 to 5 p.m. Pacific time uh, this coming um, uh, Saturday afternoon. So that's where these gentlemen uh, minus AJ will have his own panel on Sunday and Carlos won't uh, be a part of that either. Either. But these four gentlemen, Mike, Perry, Trevor, and Troy, will be there um, for that panel. That might be really one you guys really want to uh, enjoy and, and be there live to at least uh, watch and potentially ask some of your important questions about um, uh, their libraries, you know, sync licensing in general, working with them, anything that basically comes to your guys' mind. Um, how it's going to work is I'm going to essentially start off the panel by asking some of the, I think, bigger common questions about, you know, what they do, how do they get their their uh, company started, what niche segments of the TV film business do they serve, um, what's their overall philosophy, how do they run their business, what's their working relationship like with producers, composers, what's an ideal composer in their eyes, what's an ideal licensable track to them, right? So I'll ask them kind of these broader questions so that you guys can get a vibe for who they are and what they value and what they're really all about. But then that's when it's on. I'm going to just kind of hand it off and I'm going to try to reserve as much time as I possibly can for you guys to really just take it, you know, take the take the floor 
And it's really up to you. You know, if you guys don't step up to the microphone and don't put your questions in the chat box, it'll be a shorter session and we don't have to have it super long. But I've, I've reserved two hours basically because I know that this is really where we're going to get the most amount of insight and give and it'll give you guys the most access to these people that probably up until this event, most of you guys have not had direct access to to be able to ask them direct questions, um, especially even face to face for those of you that are going to be there uh, live. So that's going to be a really cool opportunity. So Arco, what's up? Glad you, uh, you're joining us live here. So again, just eight virtual plus tickets. Those are the tickets that allow you to watch it, replay it, and have that submission link to any of these library CEOs, minus Carlos here with Universal uh, Music because he's not in charge of onboarding new composers. That's not something for him to decide. But for all these other five gentlemen, you'll be able to hear from them directly during the event and also submit to them directly and have a guarantee that they will listen to your tracks. One of the common questions I got was, um, will they be listening to the tracks live at the event? No, we have far too many people that are going to be submitting music for them to be able to do that. So we're not going to do that at this event. I do have a few tracks that I will be reviewing from those that are either premium and or VIP. Um, I will be doing some live reviews at the event. So those very brave um, people are going to be there in person. And don't worry, guys, I'll be gentle for those of you that are maybe watching and worried about that. It's going to be a very positive, productive uh, review session. So I'm going to just listen to those tracks for the first time live in front of all of you guys. I'll give you guys my thoughts, my notes. We also have, you know, Trevor will be there. Mike will be there. Um, Scott and Hans of the Pro Feedback community will also be there. So they might be interested in joining in and, and sort of giving some thoughts and some notes too. So you guys might get actually some insights from a few different people in terms of what makes particular tracks review maybe more licensable and what could be in, done to sort of improve them. So we're going to get that going on there. But no, the library CEOs that are going to accept your uh, submissions and review them will not be listening to them live or reviewing them or giving you notes during the actual event. I do have an idea of potentially doing that in the future, okay? So I wanna make sure that this event just kind of is smooth and easy. Um, I don't want it to be a big workload for the people that are involved. I wanna make it really easy for them. I wanna make it enjoyable. And I want you guys to make sure that you have a reasonable amount of access to them and having that guarantee that when you submit your music to them through that private link, that you know that they will definitely be listening to that. So that's what I contracted them to be a part of this event. I said in your agreement, their actual guest speaking agreement, that's a little line item that says you will you will basically promise that all the tracks that I forward to you, you will listen to them. And if you want to reach out to any of those producers, direct uh, composers, you can reach out to them directly. They're going to give you their email addresses and their phone numbers. OK, so that's going to be something that's included. So how it's going to work is essentially I just this morning sent out that private link, okay? And do not share that. For those of you that got that link, that's just for you. And because you bought your virtual plus ticket or your in-person ticket, that's just for you. So please don't share that. Don't post that anywhere else. Make sure that that's really um, on you. And don't worry, I am monitoring all the submissions. So if I see a bunch of submissions coming in from people that didn't buy a ticket, they'll be deleted. So I'm not worried about, you know, accidentally people getting that link or something, but please just <laughs> make my life easier. Don't share that out. So basically you have until now, until June um, 11th to submit your music to whichever library CEO you'd like to. That was also a common question. Like, can I send my music in July or August when it's ready? No, we, we, we can't have this going on forever. So I'm, I'm putting a cutoff date and it's June 11th. So it's basically one week after the event. So um, you have until now, until June 11th. But I do recommend for all of you guys that had your link sent to you, I don't think it's a wise move to send your music right now. I do think you should wait until the event actually has concluded, until you've actually, at least Saturday, okay? Maybe you want to wait till Sunday as well, because that's when a, uh, AJ is going to be talking to us Sunday morning. Um, so I want you guys to probably, I, I highly recommend you sort of just wait until you have your entire, um, you have sort of the overview of who these guys are, what they're about. You've asked them some questions, and then you can make a more informed decision on which library CEO you think is the best fit. You can submit different tracks to different CEOs. That was also a common question, but you cannot send the same tracks to different CEOs simultaneously. So if you had, let's say, one album of 10 hybrid electro, electro rock tracks, high quality, ready to go. Let's say you think that Trevor is the best one for you. Well, send him the Trevor. You, what you can't do is send the same link to Trevor and Mike and go, hey, 
which one of you guys want this, right? Or pretending like, or, or not letting them know that you submitted it to other library CEOs. So that's also what I'm gonna be monitoring on the back end of all this. It's basically just a Google form with an Excel sheet so I can, I can see duplicate submissions. So please don't try to get sneaky on that and send your music to all of them. If I see the, you guys doing that, you're, you're trying to send it to two or three or four different library CEOs, I'll just delete all of your submissions and none of your music will make it to any of the CEOs, okay? So I, I don't anticipate you guys will try to do that, but I just wanna make sure that it's very clear. The reason being, if it's not clear, is if two or three of these guys get the same album and let's say two of them want the same album you've just made an enemy out of the one that you're going to say no to because you basically baited and switched them you've offered them a product that you can't give them now they're going to be pissed off they might be pissed off at me because i'm the one that sort of initiated this kind of agreement and this whole, whole arrangement so i don't want to be in the middle of that kind of a thing and i don't want you guys to sort of be the bad guys in this situation okay so just sort of word to the wise here just make sure that you um, let's say you have um, six tracks that are electro rock, six tracks that are blues rock, and your electro rock you think is good for Trevor, your blues rock you think is great for Mike. That is totally acceptable. You can have two submissions, okay, because there's two different sets of tracks and they're going to two different CEOs. So I want to make sure you guys are clear on that. If you have any questions, if you're kind of confused on that, uh, make sure you do, you know, email me first, ask me a question basically at the event too. Um, put it in the chat or if you're in person, make sure that you do ask me that kind of stuff. I want to make sure you're very, very clear on that. And then essentially the CEOs will have until July 1st to make their final decisions, okay? So I'm not gonna have you guys lingering around for months and months and wondering, hey, because they're not gonna respond. I wanna make sure you guys are clear on that. They are not responding to everybody, okay? They're only gonna respond to those of you that they feel that's high quality music. That, that's something I can definitely get placed with my clients. I wanna bring you on board to my sort of roster. So I'm not putting them under the obligation that they have to reply to maybe 20 or 30 different composers um, and write them all individual emails. That's just, I, I, again, that's one of these things where I don't wanna stack them up with a lot of work. I, I don't feel that they would wanna be a part of something like this in the future if we're doing that. So I know that's not ideal. I know you guys wanna hear back from a library and say, hey, why didn't you get back to me? What did you not like? That's what we're gonna be working on, okay? So I, I wanna basically build up this relationship with these gentlemen during this uh, event so that maybe in the future we can start to do more like listening sessions with these guys in a sort of private, maybe maybe not in person, but if it's just a Zoom session where you guys can essentially potentially submit your music, they can hear it, you can actually watch them, listen to it for the first time, and they can sort of give you their notes on it, whether or not it's like thumbs up or thumbs down, or maybe if you, you, you change some things and they can potentially work with you. So that's kind of the long-term, uh, vision I have for this sort of event is to kind of continuously break down that you know curtain and sort of pull it back continuously so that we have more and more access to the people that are really our partners in this business and I know almost everybody definitely these gentlemen and I think way more library CEOs are hungry for this kind of communication as well there's always this it feels like it's not just a frustration on our end sometimes there's a frustration on the library's end to want to have more direct communication with composers so that everybody feels like they're on the same page so i definitely plan on going further further down into this kind of uh, rabbit hole of creating more direct communication uh, channels between us and library ceo so but we're going to start very focused with one particular event and doing it in one specific way okay uh, David uh, has a question. Will there be info up on the site regarding submissions? Uh, no. So all the information about submitting your music to the library CEOs has already been emailed to you this morning. So uh, David, if you got a virtual plus or an in-person ticket, I'm not sure if you did, um, you should have it in your email inbox. If you didn't get that this morning and you do have a ticket, you need to email me right away. Okay, so don't wait until later. Let me know, hey, I got a ticket. I bought it through PayPal or let me know what, how, what method you got it. This is what my ticket was and I didn't receive a sort of confirmation email or I didn't receive that submission link. So if you didn't get it this morning, go check your spam folder first, of course, maybe your promotions folder or any of those other folders. Uh, but if you don't see it and you know that you bought one of those tickets, email me. I'll make sure that we fix that. Because what happened for a lot of you guys is you bought your tickets, if it's virtual or in-person, through PayPal. And some of your PayPal email addresses are not email addresses that you actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. They're actually old, defunct ones because you started your PayPal you know, account back in 2012 or something like that, and you don't even use that email anymore. So I, I've been keeping track of when people are buying their tickets. I'm sort of keeping them on a list. But when those confirmation emails go out and that link goes out this that went out this morning, it went to just the one email address I could find for you. And for some of you guys, if you've never e emailed with me or interacted with me and just bought a PayPal ticket, I'm gonna send you a confirmation to that PayPal email address. So if you still have access to your PayPal email address, whatever that is, go check that out too, because that's where it got sent to. But if you need me to update that, happy to do that. If you're like, hey, don't use that PayPal email. I, never, I don't even have access to that anymore. Use this new Gmail one or whatever it is. 
also email me that. I'll be happy to just swap that out for you so that as we communicate moving forward, um, I'll get it to you. So I will be, even though I sent out the submission link this morning, I will send it again. I'll probably send it again um, maybe the morning of the event, maybe the night before, and I'll probably send it again once more after the event has concluded. So it's not going to just be a one and done. If you don't find that email, you're, you're kind of screwed. So I'm going to make sure it's very available for all of you guys that bought your tickets that include that benefit, okay? So um, no problem, David. Yep, that's what we're here for is just to, um, to answer questions. And no, it's not too late to buy the ticket. It's getting close to being too late to buy virtual plus tickets, okay? So that's what I was telling you guys in the beginning. Um, there's a link in the description box below. You guys can go get your tickets now if you'd like to. Uh, right now, we are down to basically just eight virtual plus tickets, okay? If you don't know what virtual plus means, it means you get to stream the entire event. You can watch it live. You can chat with us, ask questions during it live. Um, and you can replay it afterwards if you'd like to. The link will stay live you know and, and available for replay afterwards so you don't have to participate with us live and the plus in the virtual plus acts gives you that access to be able to submit your music directly to these gentlemen uh, at least these one two three four five not carlos here at universal um, but all of these you'll get access to be able to submit music to them directly with a guarantee that they will listen and consider adding you to their catalog and signing you and you're going to be giving them your email address potentially your phone number if you want to that's optional um, you're going to give them a link to your music. So I highly recommend you have a professional looking presentation with a full, again, I will say, I think a full album is much more licensable and marketable and desirable than having three tracks or even five or six tracks. I think you can get a deal with five or six tracks. I'm not saying these guys will say no to you, but I will recommend again, as I've said to you guys for many years through, you know, this channel and through sync edge, having that full 10 tracks, at least 10 or maybe 12 tracks in a single focus genre, having a full album ready to go is basically like handing somebody the keys to a brand new car. And it's like, we're not giving you half a car. We're not giving you just the tires. We're giving you the brand new car ready to go. You can literally take this and go have fun with it. So when you give them that full album, it's like you're giving them a final finished product. So they have, you're giving them less reason for them to say no. Cause if you give them three tracks or five tracks, they might go, you know, we like what you're doing, but we need that to be like a full album before we can kind of release it. So they might sign you and then sort of have to wait for you to finish up that album before you release it. So you just put yourself in their shoes. Does that sound as desirable as the next composer that just comes to them and says, here's 12 tracks ready to go, have at it. You can put it into your catalog. So I just think that's a much more marketable and a much more attractive approach for these kind of companies, especially since, um, you know, a lot of them these days are looking for finished products. They're not looking necessarily for the kind of Back in the day, I think when I got started, I think a lot of them would be a little bit more interested in the kind of a &R process of sort of bringing you on board and helping you develop your skills and getting you up to par. These days, there's just a lot more talent. There's a lot more people. There's a lot more attention into this business. So we have to kind of step up our approach to this business to ensure that we are coming to them with our homework completed, essentially. That's kind of how I see it. And a big part of that is also having a high quality, professional looking website, not probably just sending them a Dropbox link or a SoundCloud link. You can, I'm not saying you can't get a deal that way, but I think if you have your own customized looking, high high quality, professional looking website, um, you're gonna have some amazing results. I think it'll look a lot better. And speaking of that, stay tuned because our one of our sync up sponsors um, is helping us put together an amazing tutorial video that I'm releasing actually tomorrow. So if you're on my email, uh, email list, you'll get an email about it. And if you're just subscribed to my YouTube channel, you'll see it tomorrow. So it's a, it's an amazing website. Um, perfect timings for those of you that might need a professional looking website for this event. Uh, you can create a website in basically 10 minutes and it'll allow you to track when somebody clicks on your track on your on your link rather and it'll tell you uh which tracks actually were listened to for how long which tracks were potentially skipped so to get you all that kind of feedback that data without even having to hear back directly from a library ceo so stay tuned tomorrow um that helpful video will be uh for, available for you guys to be able to create your your website very quickly you don't have to be a web designer um it's a really really easy resource for all of you guys to do so we're really grateful and it's, it's real crafter by the way i know some of you guys already use them i should have mentioned their name but they're one of our sponsors for sync up and i'm really really grateful for them they have a really just kick-ass product and a really cool way to allow those of us that are trying to be professional and step up our game and really show that we're a serious player their you know their website basically their their music pitching uh, services are exactly what usually we need for our purposes in this business and just the fact that you can sort of monitor the track the stats and what they're playing what they're skipping over which tracks are just not that hot with some of these people very very valuable i wish i just wish i had something like that when i first got started in my sync career many many years ago that nothing like that was available but 
you guys do have access to it, so definitely stay tuned tomorrow. That'll be a really helpful, I think, uh, video resource for all of you guys. So that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, we're going to cut this one short again. Don't wait to get your Virtual Plus uh, ticket. They are running out. I don't know if they'll make it till Thursday, but Thursday, all tickets are going to be essentially the end of the day Thursday. Excuse me. All tickets are going to be gone. I'm just not going to allow <clears throat> any last minute signups on Friday because Friday's game time. I'm basically driving down to the hotel. I'm getting set up. I'm meeting people for the first time. It's going to be a pretty busy day for me. The last thing I have any time for is last minute signups that need the link and didn't get access to something. So I'm just going to free myself of all of that concern and all of that sort of worry. And uh, we're going to be basically cutting off all ticket sales, all virtual and virtual plus, if there are any virtual plus left over uh, this coming Thursday. So basically, TikTok time is going away. And somebody asked me also in Sync Academy yesterday, they said, you know, they couldn't join me on this one, but they were really wanting to do this again. They wanted to know, will I will I do this again? I, I, I don't know, guys. I really just don't know. It's it's one of these things where I'd love to just tell you right now, for sure, this is going to become an annual thing that we do every single year, or we're going to maybe turn it more into a virtual event. This is purely a virtual. I, I just don't know, guys. I have to kind of go through this. This is the first time I've ever done this. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm kind of figuring it out as I go, and I'm you know making some mistakes as I go, and I'm getting some things right, and I'm figuring it out. I'm just doing a lot of learning in, ter in terms of how you put a, an event on like this. And all of that has nothing to do with actually being there in the room with you guys, running the event, giving the presentation, setting up the equipment, you know, doing all the things that basically I'm going to be doing with a lot of help. I, I have a lot of help from a few of you guys, and I, I'm not doing this by myself. Don't worry. I've been smart enough to kind of get some help from the outside. So, but I need to kind of go through this to see, like, is this something that I like? Um, is this something that I dig? Is this something that I want to do again? Uh, do I want to do it in person? Maybe I want to do it just more virtually uh, for a follow-up event. Um, so I just kind of need to get a vibe for how it's going to go. I know for sure I'm going to feel energized and excited to meet you guys. I already know that's going to be there, so I'm not worried about that. I think for me, it's just more about I don't want to overwhelm myself with an event that's just so much, so much work, so much pressure. Um, a lot riding on it, that kind of thing. Because I know some of you guys are flying from across the country. Some of you are flying from out of the country to come all the way to this event. And I was having almost like a mini panic attack last night going like, oh my God, what if I stand up there and it's like all this pressure that's like all of you guys expect so much. So don't worry, I'm not gonna choke. I'm gonna be fine with it. I know how to get through those kind of pressure situations. In fact, I know myself well enough to know that I actually perform better when I'm under a lot of pressure. So I'm actually looking forward to it. I'm going to embrace it. But I want to make sure at the end of this event, I'm not just like, oh, you know, just just dead, essentially, where it's just kind of zapped me out of all of my energy and all of my um, uh, you know, life joy, essentially. So I want to I just want to see how I feel at the end of it. Do I feel more energized? Do I feel like I mean, I'm going to feel exhausted, but is it going to be that kind of like good exhaust of like, man, that was really worth it. That was a lot of work. That's a lot of, uh, you know, moving parts and coordination and tech stuff but it was totally worth it because it was a really great, memorable weekend. If that's the vibe I get, I can guarantee you we'll do it again. If I'm you know, in the middle where I'm kind of overwhelmed, kind of excited about it, that might be a situation where I'm like, you know what, we're gonna keep this more virtual. I'm gonna kind of you know, not do so much of the in-person uh, touch to it. That might be something that's stressful. Or if I'm just completely overwhelmed by the end of it and it's just, it wasn't that enjoyable, I might just say, you know what? Sorry, guys. We we gave it a shot. I was really glad to meet you guys, but that's it. That was that was a one and done situation. We're just not going to do something like that again. I'm right now just kind of neutral on all those scenarios. It might be any one of those. I have no idea. So we're going to hope for the best. I'm going to basically do my best in terms of planning and preparing myself for it. But you know, you just never know until you go through a, a situation like that. So definitely don't wait. This may be the one and only time we get to kind of meet each other, hang out with each other, you know, for this kind of a cool event. So I encourage you guys to take advantage of it while it is here. Uh, last question I'll answer before I jump off. David's asking, how long will the videos be up for? Uh, forever. Basically, what I'm going to do is give you guys a private streaming link that you can watch live, and it's basically just going to be two links. One link will be sent out Saturday morning, and it'll be one continuous stream all day long. Granted that the internet doesn't go down and the stream doesn't go down, I might have to reset it at some point. So please bear with me, guys, if that does happen. Um, and then basically Sunday, we'll do the same thing. I'll send you a new fresh link Sunday morning, and that'll be a, an entire link all the way through. So you can basically just sit and watch with us if you'd like to. Or afterwards, when we're done, I click stop 
streaming, those links, you can click on them anytime, they'll be emailed to you, and you can basically just scrub through them and watch any particular parts you want to. Skip through something that's not that interesting to you, not that applicable to you. Obviously, you'll skip through our breaks and our lunch break and our, maybe our networking break, something that you're not really wanting to watch. Uh, maybe you want to watch an hour and a half of nothing. Um, but basically, just go right through the event at your own speed. You can put it on 1.5, 2.0, you can go on really fast, whatever you want to. So yeah, those links aren't going to go anywhere. They're going to stay up basically forever. So um, that's what I got for you guys. Click on the link in the description box below you can learn more about uh, these gentlemen they all have links right to their websites so you can learn more about you know what kind of placements they get um, how long they've been in business all that good stuff we've got our event schedule sort of put up here so you can see what it's generally going to look like we'll we'll do our best to stick to this things might be a little bit flexible as you know maybe some sessions go a little longer others go a little bit shorter but this is generally what we're going to sort of try to stick with so that'll be kind of interesting for you guys and as i said before virtual tickets are available 99 uh, bucks and if you want to get that virtual uh, plus added to it it's basically just an optional $49 on top of your 99 bucks, about 150 bucks. And you've got everything. You basically got access to the entire event. You can watch it live. You can watch it replay. Excuse me, I'm choking here. <clears throat> and you can actually submit your music to these library CEOs uh, with a guarantee that they will actually listen. So <clears throat> now that I'm losing my voice <laughs> and losing my uh, ability to breathe, I'll go ahead and end the stream. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave them below. Or email me, jesse at syncmymusic.com. And other than that, we'll see you guys at Sync Up here in just uh, literally, what, five days, six days? It's crazy how fast it's coming up. So I'm excited to see you guys, whether it's virtually or in person.